What is up boys, my name is Berate and welcome to my post plant guide. Now in this video, I'm going to be going over how to play post plants to the best of my knowledge with every single agent in the game. Uh, I will be using Haven as an example, just because I think Haven is a very versatile map and you can really get like a lot of different post plant situations on Haven. So that's the best one I'm going to do. Anyways, I'll be going over one main post plant strategy for every single character in the game. Uh, this is supposed to be an attacker sided post plant thing, as in you planted the bomb and are attempting to stop the diffusers from diffusing the bomb. Uh, if you guys want, at some point, I will make a like retake guide for every agent in the game. But that would be a lot more difficult than this because post plants are generally pretty straightforward. But it's always good to have some trips tricks up your back pocket for situations like this. So first starting off with Astra, the main one that you're gonna be seeing a lot with Astra is you're gonna be see them drop a star like this, wait for them to tap the bomb and then use your suck to suck them off of the bomb. Uh, what this does is as they're diffusing, it will suck them off of the bomb as they're diffusing. Alternatively, what you could do is if you want to get a little bit more spicy with it, you could also do this where you stun them and then suck them. But this requires to use two pieces of, of your utility that you would, you know, have otherwise have been trying to use for, you know, just like the general sight hit. So again, uh, not too sure why you would do this. Generally sucking them is enough, but if you have the utility to spare and you're in like a 1v1, 1v2, stunning and sucking is probably one of the most effective ways that you could use the Astra stars. Um, now another like honorable mention is this strategy right here with Astra's ultimate where if you drop Astra's ultimate like this right and then you have the spike like sticking out like this right what you can do is you can bait the enemies into sticking the bomb on the other side like this and then you would have your star here to suck them through the wall like this um, I've seen this in VCT in particular. Um, I couldn't find the clip if I tried, but uh, I think it was like Shopify Rebellion um, on Pearl and they were running an Astra comp and what they did was they had half the spike sticking out and notice how you don't go off the sound, you actively look at the spike and like wait for the spike to turn red. And then when the spike turns red, uh, that's when you know they're diffusing. So that's when you can bait them into sticking, suck them off. And then after that, you shoot them while they're stunned, sucked, etc. Um, but yeah, that's like generally how you want to use Asher for post plants. Uh, really, really straightforward. Asher's utility is really, really good, especially if you're planting in a spot where the bomb can be one weight. If you're planting in a spot where the bomb can be one weight, uh, you just drop your one way smoke on top of it and it's fine. All right, on to the next agent. All right, boys, Breach. Now, Breach is a very, very oppressive agent with post plant, especially if he has utility to spare, mainly because of this combo right here. If the bomb is planted near a wall, you can just aftershock and flash. Now, obviously on B isn't really the, like the best example of this, but like a really common one that I see for A site is this one right here, where you sort of like get the bomb planted in this corner right here. Um, and then what you do is, is you come over and you blast the bomb like this. You see that goes all the way through and covers it. Or if you're playing from here, you just go, you jiggle and you blast the bomb like that. And that also covers it. Um, using your aftershock anytime the bomb is planted near a wall is very, very powerful. But again, generally, you're if you don't have aftershock, you're just going to want to prime your stun, then stun the bomb, flash, do whatever, use your utility. Breach is like one of the most straightforward post plant agents in the game uh, when it comes to just, you know, playing post plant. You just want to throw a bunch of utility at the bomb. And generally, that should be enough to get them off of it. Now, a very common pitfall that I'll see with like people who use it is they'll peek right away after the utility. Because even though this is very powerful, just throwing util at the spike, it's also extremely predictable. So oftentimes, especially in higher elos, what'll happen is you'll get someone like sticking the bomb, but then they'll be ready for the util. So they'll have their back turned, wait for the flash, get off the bomb, turn back, and then try and shoot you. That's what you don't want. You don't want that to happen. So generally what you should do is you should throw your CC on the first tap and then don't peek, wait a split second, and then throw your second piece of CC to full blind them and that should much easier catch them off guard. 
Um, but anyways, yeah, that's just the general idea of how to play post plants with breach now uh there is a very specific one that is on abyss i'm not going to swap to abyss for this but if you are playing abyss with breach and you do have your ultimate uh when they're sticking the bomb if you plant the bomb on the edge of the map you can ult to knock them off of the map so that's a bit of tech for you anyways on to the next agent brimstone oh where do i start with the amount of stupid tech you can do with brimstone and post plants <laughs> now brimstone is one of those agents where if you lose a post plant while you're playing brimstone you're playing the character wrong specifically when you have your molly and or your ultimate now the easiest piece of tech that you can do with brimstone with your ultimate is you just plant the bomb oh voice crack oh my goodness <laughs> i swear i'm an adult guys i, I i'm not a prepubescent child anyways uh what you do is all you do is you just ult the bomb now, a very, very common misconception with the Brimstone Ultimate is, especially with like newer Brim players or people who are filling, is they'll just drop your ult right on top of the bomb, which is fine, that works, but especially when the bomb is planted like that, you want to make it so that your ult covers as much area as it can to not only get them off of the bomb, but also give them less places to run to, because then you have the information of, oh, if you know that they're, you know, can't run this way without dying, you know they have to be back site, so you get a general idea of where they are. So if you're going to capitalize off of your ultimate, you can. Now, um, another thing with the uh, with the brimstone ultimate is the timing of it. You want to throw your brimstone ultimate a split second after you hear the tap, because you want to bait them into try and halfing or sticking the bomb without them actually getting the bomb to half. So say the bomb taps. So say someone taps the bomb, I, I have my ult out, I'm waiting for a beep, split second later, then I'll, then I'll blast the ultimate, because it takes 3.5 seconds to half the bomb, and if you wait a second afterwards, it takes 2 seconds for the ult to wind up, so they're not going to be able to get half, and if they do get half, they're just going to die. So they have to either choose between not getting half, or getting half and then dying, which puts them in a really, really awkward situation, especially if it's a 2 versus 1. Uh because you know if it's a two versus one obviously if they die they're going to be down a person and then you can use the second piece of tech with brimstone and that is lineups now if you uh, are playing brimstone and don't have post plant lineups you are doing yourself a colossal disservice post plant lineups with brimstone are the most like easy yet most useful things that you can do like there's one right there where i'm just looking at that wall there and then the molly lands right on the bomb and the molly lasts for a super long time and it does so much damage obviously i have invulnerability on right now so i don't like i take fall damage when i'm doing my showcases but the molly lasts for about seven to eight seconds and it kills people before they can even half the bomb you can't half let alone stick through a brim molly so generally as a rule of thumb you're gonna want to go with your molly as much as you can but what if you're in a game say you're filling you don't play brim and you're like oh i don't have i don't have a lineup for this i don't i don't have a lineup i'm gonna go cry well um that's where this piece of tech comes in so what you're gonna do is you're gonna drop a smoke right on top of the bomb but you're gonna be looking upwards now notice how when the smoke forms there's a circle that forms in the sky look at it again look at it again when you drop a smoke a circle forms in the sky what you do is you put your crosshair right in the middle of that smoke and then no matter where you're standing as long as there isn't a giant wall in between you that's uh, gonna obstruct the molly the molly will always land right in the middle of the smoke in this in the circle where it drops now i do not know who figured this out um i stole this from a mr lowlander video so uh full credit to him but i know like he's not the one that came up with it someone in his discord came up with it I would give credit if I knew the credit, but still, you can quite literally just drop a smoke anywhere, look at where the center of the uh, circle is, then what you can do is you can run over, and the molly will always land in the middle of the smoke, regardless of where you are, unless there's a wall in the way. So say I want to do it from like mid, say I want to do it from like mid to A, right? So I'm here, I drop the smoke, I do this. I don't know if this is going to work because there's this roof in the way that's going to obstruct it. And you see, that doesn't work because the roof is in the way. But if the roof wasn't there, it would have worked. So be mindful of map terrain. And this just comes down to map knowledge. Be mindful of map terrain because sometimes map terrain will mess you up. 
but just generally as a rule of thumb this is one of the best brimstone tricks in the book so definitely abuse this whenever you can now for this last trick with brimstone I have to actually plant the bomb to show you. Now, say you don't have a lineup and you don't have any smokes left and you can't even get off the site. Here's what you do. So you're gonna plant the bomb and you want to listen to the beeping sound. So first, the spike beeps once every second. Listen to it. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> so here's what you do. You're gonna wait for the spike to not beep one time a second, but two times. So it's gonna start going beep, 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 beep 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 and the second that it starts beeping twice you shoot your molly up in the air and then you win the round instantly listen to this wait for it molly. boom like that now notice how at no point during the molly's lifespan can they actually defuse the bomb at no point during this they can defuse there's the outer ring they can't defuse the bomb they just can't do it <laughs> so if you want to instantly win post plants with brimstone and you don't have a lineup you don't have a smoke you don't have any lineups you don't have a like anything you can't even get off site this trick will single-handedly win you so many rounds <coughs> just by waiting for the spike to beep twice shoot the molly up in the air and then you instantly win the post plant right then and there and yeah that um that's all my tricks for brimstone uh let's move on to the next uh, agent all right chamber is going to be very short and very sweet because uh there's not much you can do with chamber chamber is one of those agents where two of his weapons are literal weapons or sorry two of his abilities are just straight up guns so like obviously if you're planting in a spot that can be wall banged so say you plant right here and you're playing window you can wall bang this wall with high penetration and it will go through i guess that's sort of tech you can do with this but honestly, the only real tip that I can give is to throw your trip near the bomb to know when they're sticking. Because not only will it give you a, with the, it'll give you an indication of, you know, when they're close to the bomb or when they're on the bomb, it'll also slow them. So spamming will be easier and you get more information because they can't really leave the spot. But generally, uh, as a rule of thumb with chamber, another one I can do is to, is if you have your TP, definitely have your TP set up for a quick, um, like a getaway and a quick reposition because if you're in a 1v1 obviously you're not going to really need the need the get out of jail free card because if you you know i mean i guess you could use it but like not really um but if you're in a 2v1 definitely you're going to be you know trying to go for like an early pick you're going to be fighting um and then you know once you're fighting then you're going to be trying to get one and teleport out but with chamber the only real post plant tip that i can give is to put your trip in a spot where it can monitor the bomb uh, so that you can more easily swing off of it and just win. But yeah, no, that's really the only trick with Chamber. With Chamber, you kind of just have to be the better player positioning-wise. Um, so generally, and this would probably be a good time to mention this, uh, with any agent in the game, with any, any, any agents in the game, um, what you do is you don't peek off the first tap, you peek off the second tap. Or if you think that they're sticking, then you use a piece of utility. So like here, this chamber trip, you know when they're near the bomb and you have a lot easier time and getting a heads up when they approach the bomb. But other than that, uh, you never peek off the first tap, you peek off the second tap. All right, but yeah, that's about it for chamber. Let's go on to the next guy. All right, Clove. Um, uh, with Clove, you wanna be abusing your ultimate whenever possible with the post plant. Because if you are playing Clove, and the bomb is planted you can use your ultimate even if it's a 1v1 like none of your teammates could be alive and the bomb could be planted and you would still uh you know be able to use your ultimate uh because the bomb is planted and as long as the bomb is planted you are allowed to use your ultimate as close um yeah so definitely abuse the ultimate uh as far as the smokes go uh, so Clove is a, an, an agent like Brimstone where you can throw a one-way pretty much anywhere you want if, if the bomb's planted next to a box. So like, for example, uh, a very common plant on Haven is right here. All you gotta do is just pop a, uh, pop a smoke right here, and then that's a one-way. Um, if the bomb is planted, you know, like over here. Uh, this is sort of a one-way right here, but not really. Uh, this smoke kind of just helps them, but you know. <laughs> It can sort of be a one-way, I guess, if you pop it up a little bit like this, but they're still going to have cover. But they're going to have, like, less area to diffuse from, so it'll be easier to spam. But generally, you want to be throwing one-ways when you can. But the main tip with Clove is don't be afraid to use your ultimate in post plants. 
because that's really where it shines especially if you're in a 1v1 situation you can play very very aggressive in these post plant situations so say you're in a 1v1 the bomb is planted uh and you know that they have to be somewhere ct you can very easily just go and fight ct extremely easily you can go and just fight ct um and then you can like take an early fight and if you do end up dying you can just ult run away and then re-engage so you get like like a double opportunity to fight for the post plant with clove which is very very powerful but yeah and then you know the decay um if the bomb is smoked off like say like say the enemy controller smokes off the bomb uh it's very easy off of tap to just throw one of these and then they're gonna be like either one one hp or two hp so your spam becomes infinitely easier and infinitely and infinitely more scary if you do have this but generally you're gonna be using uh your decay as like a sight hit tool so like you would decay back, back platform but if you somehow have the decay still into the post plant don't be afraid to just chuck it and spam or you could even smoke off the bomb yourself if you want well not the one way obviously my muscle memory is giving me the one way but if you like throw a non hello if you throw a non one way you can just you know throw one of these and then your spam becomes a lot more deadly to a lot more deadly to deal with but anyways yeah uh, that's about it for clove clove is a relatively straightforward agent post plant wise just make sure they're using that ultimate all right on to the next one Alrighty, cypher uh cypher is very very deadly in post plants if you know what you're doing and i'm actually going to go on c for this example because you know i don't think c site gets enough love i really love attacking c on haven c is c is a very very fun site but anyways um trip wires abuse the living heck out of trip wires on or near the bomb like obviously if you're playing cypher you're going to want to have your trip for flank so that your duelist player doesn't yell at you and they get shot in the back by their flanking chamber uh but in any other scenario you're going to be using your trips to either you know trip off ct trip off you know a couple of the danger angles like this or you could just throw a trip right on top of the bomb so you can do this now there is a trick uh with cha with chambers chamber cyphers camera uh with the bomb where if the spike is planted which i'm gonna have a very limited time to explain this since the plant will be the spike will be planted because if you put your camera right on top of the bomb it is very difficult for the enemies to see and they're probably not going to pre-fire it because unlike like unlike killjoy mollies chambers cam cypher's camera doesn't reveal itself when he gets close and you're not going to be spamming the camera so um generally what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to just you know tap your camera to see if they're on or off the bomb and then that in tandem with you know your cages you can throw uh if you're good enough with your cages which i'm not uh you can even like throw one ways if you want but obviously i'm not like good with aiming cypher cages but you know you get the idea you can throw one ways on the bomb tap check to see if they're on that in tandem with your trips and everything else and if you have your ultimate you can even see if they're on the bomb uh there's pretty much like no winning against the cypher in a post plant if the cypher has time to set up and you have to think about that when you're actually strategizing for your clutches and for your post plants is um if i plant the bomb am i going to have enough time to set up and generally you want to go for plants where you give yourself or or you have your team give you time to set up just because the second that you get like even like a semblance of a setup down so say you know you throw a trip on the bomb you throw your camera and you run away like that's two pieces of utility that can single-handedly turn a post plant from free low into being extremely difficult to deal with but anyways yeah that is about it for cypher um on to the next guy Alrighty, deadlock deadlock um deadlock is one of those agents uh that thrives in post plant situations sort of for the same reason that cypher does is is with is with the setups you can do so generally what you will see a lot of deadlock players do is throw a trip either on or near the spike so like this and to make sh and you want these trips to be placed in such a way where if they tap the bomb they'll get stunned and it's you know normally a good idea to double trip the bomb just as a setup or if you want you could use your second trip you know like somewhere else let's say you want to cover this walk out whatever you get the idea but generally um what's it called but generally uh, you're going to want to throw your trip on or near the bomb so that when it, you know, gets tapped, they'll get stunned and you'll have an easier time to swing. Now, uh, the grab net, 
it can be used for post plants pretty effectively, but it, you can't really throw your grab net without revealing your position. And generally in post plants, you don't want to reveal your position until the very last second. So you want to be using a lot of disjointed utility, just disjointed utility, meaning you get to use the utility without it like revealing your position. Because if you throw this, immediately once you throw it and it lands, everyone knows where it comes from because they see the actual projectile. Um, so yeah. Uh, anyways, on to the combo. Uh, the combo that I see a lot with deadlock players, especially like higher elo ones, is they'll throw this and then they'll make and then they'll use their ultimate off of that because the stun has like the property of slowing them. Because when you get stunned, you get slowed for a couple seconds. There's pretty much no avoiding the ultimate. And you know, obviously, if you have ultimate lineups, which I don't obviously because I don't play that much deadlock, um, that can work. Like, there's this uh, one lineup that I saw Boney, I'm pretty sure, do. Uh, it was on Ascent, where he would, like, bounce it off of a roof, and then he would use that for post-plant. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to pull this off, but actually theorycraft a bit. Let's see where this lands. That don't land nowhere, but you get the idea. Um, there are Deadlock Ultimate lineup guides out there that you can use, so I would, like, recommend to use those if you want to learn those lineups. But honestly off of a stun just hucking your just you know just like hucking your ultimate at them can work wonders for you in post plant situations uh but anyways yeah everything in tandem with each other is very good and now the final tip that i'll give is to actually use your wall to wall off the bomb like this so if you throw your wall on the corner of the bomb like this they actually have to break quite a few wall segments in order to actually get to the point where they can defuse the bomb um, they'll generally only have to break one of these wall segments, but if you have your wall on top of the trips, on top of the threat of you ulting, and then as a final result on top of this, it's going to be really difficult to defuse the bomb, especially if they have to break the wall, because they have either the choice of breaking the wall or trying to fight you. Which, as they're breaking the wall and the trip goes off, you're going to be able to get a bunch of free kills. So that's about it for Deadlock. Let's move on to the next guy. Fade. Um, you're going to start to notice a pattern uh, with these agents. And that is, use utility when they're on the bomb. Um, now, what you can do is, so say the bomb is planted. You know, I'm going to go back over to A. I'm going to go back over there for this example. Um, is say they're over on A here and the spike is planted somewhere uh sort of like you know a sovadar or whatever you can use your eye i messed up that lineup it's supposed to land on top of this roof here uh you can use your eye to check whether they're on the bomb or not uh because because fade's eye gives you it gives you that purple outline you can see if they're like mid diffuse animation because they'll be crouched down and they'll have the little thing out uh you'll be able to see if they're mid defuse or not um just by using the eye and and just based on the purple outline and you can get creative with your eyes like you can throw them on top of roofs you can throw them behind the spike you can throw it you know on top of the spike but generally you're going to want to be throwing your eyes on roofs if you can just because they're more difficult to shoot and they also just cover more area yeah um also another thing i like to use uh with fade and this is a bit of an outplay with your ultimate is what i will do is I will show myself, like I will intentionally like use a dog or like jiggle peek and angle to reveal my position. And then as I'm running away, I wait for them to tap. I ult and then I'll immediately come in from another angle. So for example, there's there. I make sure that they know that I'm a short. I ult for the deafen and then I go, I clear sight from another angle and I make sure not to give away my position over here. That's a bit of an outplay that can be applied to pretty much any site with two main entrances. So say, you know, you go see, obviously C long would be a little bit more difficult because you would have to ult and then like run all the way through garage. But on sites like A here, or even like larger sites like Ascent, um, that's what you would want to do. Because oftentimes uh, when they're ulted, they're going to get off the bomb and try and fight you. But if they just like a giga chat their way through the ultimate and stick anyways, tough luck. Um, but this will definitely give you a better chance, especially if you're in like a 1v2, 1v3, 1v4, 1v5 situation. I generally wouldn't blow my ult in a 1v1. In a 1v1, I would generally just play 
to just util dump the living crap out of them with like dogs eyes and like and like you know i would like i would throw one of these at him as well like generally in 1v1s i'm playing to just like util dump them off the bomb but if you're in a 1vx situation that isn't a 1v1 and you have your ultimate definitely ulting and then and then immediately knife out full like noising to reposition is a viable strategy because you don't need to be silent because the ult is gonna deafen them anyways but yeah that's just a couple of outplays uh, with fade let's uh, go to next agent now i have gone over this gecko strategy before in videos but i'm gonna go over it again because it is a very good strategy i call this strategy with gecko the combo and it is just coined the combo i hear them trees rustling anyways and for this example i'll ha i'll say the bomb is planted for ct and you're in a 1v1 the combo is simply this you throw your wingman i mean uh, okay not over there you throw your wingman and then as the wingman bounces off of the wall you throw your flash because this leaves the enemy in a position where they either have to shoot the wingman and get blind shoot the blind and get wingmanned or try and shoot you and get hit by both which they're not going to shoot you because they're going to be like covered in goop and full stun so that's not going to happen so the timing of it is as he bounces off of the wall you throw your flash and then you swing with your flash like you normally would um and in post plants especially in like 1v1s and 1v2s this is especially powerful because if you have full util, which with Gecko, you should have full utility because you should be picking up your guys whenever you possibly can because the pickup is like so fast. But um, anyways, yeah. Um, what you can do with Gecko is you can use the combo on the bomb when you hear them tap, boom, like this. You swing out, you fight, you go for a spray transfer, whatever you gotta do. Now, if you have your ultimate, this becomes even more scary in post plants with Wingman. Or not with Wingman, with Thrash. Because all you have to do is just whip out the thrash, a bunny hop around, scare them a bit, and then, you know, and then, you know, finally go for the detain. Now, a very, very uh, common uh, misconception I see with using thrash and post plants is what geckos will do is they will immediately go and then they'll just go for the detain immediately. Thrash is, is a kind of a double-edged sword. Thrash is one of those uh, ultimates that can give you hard cc which is the detain but it can also give you a lot of information and if you're in a 1v2 1v3 post plant situation that information can be absolutely vital so don't so when they tap the bomb don't go for the thrash immediately don't go for the don't go for the detain immediately unless they're sticking the bomb if the, if you see on the thrash that they're sticking the bomb and they're about to win the round obviously throw it but if you have the opportunity bunny hop around try and get as much information as you possibly can out of the thrash before you actually go for the detain uh in post plants this can be extremely powerful uh because not only do you get information but you can also net yourself a lot of free kills and you know after you get the detain perfect time to use the combo because when one person is detained they're gonna like the other two people who are fighting you are gonna be trying to help them so then you can use the combo on the other two and you're good for three there now again these is just like all hypotheticals and you want to be using you know like your own knowledge of the game in your games i'm just giving you options here of what you can do and this is definitely a very very good combo that you can do with gecko but anyways yeah um on to the next guy harbor um harbor's sort of in that same boat as chamber where he doesn't really have any utility to help him out in a post plant except for his wall now so say the bomb is planted like right here what you could do is you can sort of do like an astral wall type situation and throw the wall like this to cut off the bomb or in an ideal world you would have the wall going out like this to fully cut off the bomb like this so that when they stick it t it gets rid of a lot of the scary angles you have to deal with you know in normal post plants it gets rid of a lot of the scary angles you have to deal with because generally if you're in a 1v2 there's one person that's going to be sticking and the other person's going to be holding for the sticker um but if you have a wall set up you know like this or whatever um you can uh, you can definitely isolate your fights a lot easier because the only spot that they could be is either on the bomb and to the right and it makes it really easy to just you know clear this clear 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 you get the idea 
Um, but anyways, yeah, so that's really the only tip I have with Harbor. If you have your ultimate, this can also be beneficial in post plants because it gets them off of the bomb for a while and it gets them shimmying around, which you can hear their footsteps. And it also has the concuss if they do want to stick. But other than that, Harbor's kind of bad in post plants, to be honest. Um, you really want to be like using your general post plant knowledge regardless of utility which means you know make sure your timing is good make sure you've internalized the spike timing when when can the bomb be halved when 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 can the bomb not be halved what sound does it make when you know you're sticking the bomb and it's half etc etc but anyways yeah that's about it for harbor let's go on to the next guy use your ultimate when you're uh at mm, wow you know what? I'm not going to cut that out of the video. You guys get to hear bloopers and everything. Um, ISO ultimate is very good in post plants, especially if it's a 1v1. Now, in the old days of ISO's ultimate, when you would just throw it out and you were just in a 1v1, you wouldn't have an advantage. And yet you get the advantage because you get them off the bomb for a while, but it's still a 1v1 at the end of the day. But nowadays with current ISO, because you can just slap a shield on yourself anytime you want, uh, your uh, your ISO ult becomes extremely scary in post plants because of the fact that you will have a direct advantage going into the 1v1. Now, if you are in a 1v2 with your ISO ultimate, don't use it. This is specifically for 1v1 situations. But if you are in a one versus two, um, don't use the ISO ult because while you're fighting one guy, the other guy's just going to stick. But if you're in a 1v1, ISO's ultimate on the bomb is pretty much a free win. All you have to do is just sit here, pop your shield off tap, ult them off the bomb, and then take your free round. Um, other than that, uh, throwing your vulnerables are is sort of the same idea as the clove decay from earlier. Where what you do is say the bomb is smoked off. You throw your vulnerable and then you have a much easier time spamming or say you're back here You throw your vulnerable and you have a much easier time spamming because they are going to be taking double the damage They normally would so that means that your spam becomes more deadly Especially especially if you have a phantom you can just sort of just phantom them out um, But you know with vandal it also works as well. Anyways, that's the uh, that's the general idea behind uh, ISO's ultimate uh, And like isotech um, Other than that you could just like use your wall to push up and you know try to isolate your fights that way but this is very risky because they could just flood your wall and then you're dead but anyways yeah that's a uh, that's about it for iso let's uh let's go on to the next guy abuse the living heck out of off angles with jet now if you're playing jet uh you really want to be abusing as many off angles as you can and abusing the verticality especially if you're in a 1v1 post plan situation uh if you're in if you're in a 1v1 post plan situation say the bomb's planned like right here um oftentimes what what you know retakers are going to be expecting is they're going to see the bombs planted over here and they're going to be like oh jet's probably playing long and then you're just sitting on top of this box ready to murk them because ain't no way they're clearing you right here it, especially if you like know the know the spot where you can sit back and not be exposed from ct you have like a bit of a pixel angle into ct but you also have the added benefit of you know having off angle advantage or alternatively you know you could sit on top of this box right here and you know hold ct and like hold like this you could you know i don't like really sitting on top of this box because you're exposed to for a from a little bit too much for my liking but still this box is an option especially if you know where they're coming from you can very very easily farm a, a, a metric ton of free wins with uh with jet just by purely abusing the verticality and if you have your dash you can also feel free to play aggressive especially if you're in a 2v1 post plant Generally, the idea is you're going to want to be playing for early picks as much as you possibly can. So generally, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be popping your dash. You're going to be trying to take a fight, right? And then getting one and dashing out. Obviously, I messed up my dash. But you know, you're going to be tr you're going to be trying to, you know, playing to get a pick and dash away. And because you have that get out of jail free card with Jet, you are very, very free to take fights even in 1v1s. What you can do is you can very easily like hold a tight angle like this or even like an off angle like this try and get a kill and get out or you could purely just play for information right like you can like you know wait for footsteps run around and you don't even have to shoot once you see him you can run away and now you know where he is so then you can you know off angle like this they're gonna hear you updraft if they're this close but you get the idea uh, be creative with jet but definitely a thing that i don't see utilized enough 
especially with jets and post plants is uh the verticality and also the fact that jet can make a one way anywhere she wants is also very useful and if you're really good at you know controlling jet smokes you can sort of just pop a one way anywhere you want especially for post plants and you get about two ish seconds of free space where you can spam the bomb like that um anyways yeah on to the uh next stage ko lineups are very strong in post plants uh because the molly lasts for so long because like listen to this listen to this uh, ko's molly lasts for two three, it's about like six or seven seconds of molly um and ko sort of has the same idea as brimstone where if you plant the bomb what you do is you wait a couple seconds after the bomb beeps twice and that's where you throw your and then that's where you throw your molly straight up in the air so sort of the idea you're gonna wait for the bomb to beep twice and then you know for this entire time you're gonna be you know fighting knifing flashing you know stuff like that wait for the bomb to beep twice And that's about the timing right there. Notice how I did a jump throw? So it's in the air for longer. Boom. And then at this point, there's only a couple seconds left on the bomb where they're not going to really be able to defuse from there. They could, like, try to ninja defuse it and then, like, tank the last pulse of the nade and run to the bomb. But it's going to be a lot more difficult uh, to do that. Especially if, you know... You're in the post plant, you know they're running at you, you throw the molly up in the air, and then you run away. The molly buys you enough time to set up, you know, for, like, flashes like this. Also, by the way, flashing high over stuff like this as KO is very, very strong. Because not only are the flashes extremely difficult to dodge, but they're also extremely difficult to predict. So, like, you know, if you know any flashes like this, or, like, here, I don't even know these flashes. I'm kind of just winging them a little bit with, like, the jump throws and stuff. But if you flash on the bomb, it's very good. But again, don't fall into like that breach pitfall where you, f where you, you know, flash and you then immediately swing off of it. Wait a couple seconds to see if they dodge the blind and then swing. Because if they re-tap, then you know that they weren't blind because they're not going to stick the bomb or tap the bomb when they're blind. So what you do is you wait a couple seconds, you know, after you do it, you flash once, wait to see if they tap again. And then, and then if they don't tap, flash again and if they do tap then swing without a flash that's sort of the pattern i like to do with kale um and then you know as far as the knife goes you can use your knife for information to know if they're near the bomb uh you can also use your knife early into the retake to stop them from smoking off the bomb that's very powerful um and then your ultimate is pretty much just a you don't get to retake button uh where you get rid of all of the retake utility for you know however many seconds kale's all last how many seconds quite a few seconds quite a few seconds um and especially if you still have teammates alive uh and you just planted the bomb and you know they like to retake off tap fast you press your ultimate and this is pretty much just a you don't get to retake button so you know you know how it is um anyways yeah uh let's get on uh to the next agent kill joy kill joy is an shut up kill joy anyways uh kill joy is a very very sh oppressive agent in post plants because of the amount of like setup you can do kg is sort of in the same camp as cypher when it comes to like a post plants is you want to be setting up your utility to make the post plant awkward for the enemy team so generally what i'll see killjoys do is they'll have a turret for information to see when they're like on the bomb along with an alarm bot as well to see when they're on the bomb they'll have one molly on the bomb like this and then they'll have one molly in their pocket to throw at the bomb later now, a very common pitfall that I see a lot of Killjoy players fall into with their mollies is they will throw both their mollies on the bomb. Now, this is good in theory because then you don't have to throw anything and reveal your position, but this also has the added downside of every single Killjoy and their mother does this, and if the enemy team knows they're playing a post plan against a Killjoy, they're going to be like spraying the bomb frantically, getting rid of those nanobombs, and then you're just going to be like up a creek here unless you have your ultimate in which case you know just like this is another free win button you just click the button and you win the post plan instantly it's crazy how that works but generally what i'll see is there'll be the turret for information the alarm bot near the bomb for the information and the weaken effect one on the bomb 
so that once the alarm bot goes off, you can pop this. But then you keep one bomb in your pocket so that you can stop them from, uh, like, countering your entire, like, a bomb setup uh, by just, you know, shooting your bombs. And that's about it for, like, Killjoy stuff. Uh, you would think that Killjoy would be a lot more complicated because she has a lot of post map utility, but it really is as simple as that. Now, if you want to keep your turret in your pocket and just have the alarm bot for the info, what you can do is you can wait for them to tap the bomb, then send your turret out to peek for you, and then if they shoot the turret, you know that they're off the bomb so you don't peek, but if the turret starts shooting them, then you swing off of it, and then you swing off the turret's information. And you're gonna look at the bullet tracers of the turret to know exactly where they are, so you can kind of just like wall hack them. Um, with the turret bullet tracers, because the turret like, you know, has aimbot and, and probably won't miss them. So anyways, that's about it uh, for Killjoy stuff. Let's, let's, uh, if you know how to do neon movement, you can absolutely bully people in 1v1s with post plants. Now, um, what I like to see a lot of times, especially when I'm watching like the absolute goats of neon, like Grumpy and like, you know, Shiro, Frank, Temet, stuff like that, is when they're in a 1v1 post plant, they're gonna be using their movement to their full advantage. The second that you tap the bomb, Rest assured, a wall is going up, you're gonna get stunned, and then after that, you're just gonna get hopped on like this. You know, it's even more impressive when they have ultimate, because they can just hit you with, like, one of these, and hit you with the cha-cha slide like this. Full reset, and then, you know, and then, you know, as you're trying to stick the bomb, you got, like, Neon hopping in front of you like this, just trolling you like this. Like, a lot of times, I'll see Neons just, like, slide across, you know, slide across trying to hit this, and just, like, just get... Slide across, try and hit this, and just, like, run away. So they'll slide across, hit this, and then, you know, just, like, slide to the other side like this so they're completely safe. We... Now, this is more of, like, a 1v1 strategy, but you need to be abusing Neon Slide and Neon's hops as when you're in post plants like this, just because of the fact that uh, the, you're going to be super difficult to hit. And especially if you have stun, not only are you going to be looking super sick while you do it, but it's also going to be a free win because the enemy is is going to be panicking if they, you know, see this coming towards them at Mach 7 and, you know, just like ready to blast them like this. Anyways, yeah, that's a uh, that's about it for Neon. Just abuse the movement. Uh, definitely wall to isolate your angles, stun off of information and then just go ham on them pretty much like um, there's there is this one pretty famous a grumpy clip from one of his videos where he is on Haven in a B post plant. And he's just, you know, like hopping on them. Like, I think he like was sitting grass or something. And then he just hopped on him like this, swung and then won the round. Anyways, yeah, that's uh, uh, that's about it for Neon. Relatively straightforward. Let's go on to the next. Omen is very much in the same camp as Jet when it comes to like post plant positioning. You want to be using your teleports to like abuse the verticality of maps. Now, uh, uh generally... Uh, with Omen, your your strategy is going to be a little bit more in-depth than that, but still. Um, a strategy I like to use on Haven in particular is I'll plant the bomb right here. I'll have a one-way on top of the bomb, and then I'll just be sitting in the smoke. Then what I'll do is I'll wait for them to, you know, try and retake the site. They're going to think, oh, the bomb is one-way when the smoke's about to go down. I'll replenish the smoke like I normally would. I mean, obviously, the smoke's dropping here. But, you know, I'll replenish the smoke like I normally would, and then I'll just sit in the smoke and I'll wait. Because, you know... I get a free angle on the bomb, like this, or I can also just shoot downwards like this because I'll be able to see their head. Um, but also, they're not going to clear me because they're just going to think that this is a one-way when in actuality, I'm sitting in the smoke. Um, and you can do this on any spot where you're generally going to be one-waying the bomb. So say you're on B here, right? And the bomb is planted right here. You put a one-way on the bomb and then you're just going to be, you know, using your TP and you're just going to be sitting here like this. Uh, this is very, very good in 1v1s and, like, 1v2s. If you're in a 1v3, 1v4, or 1v5, um, generally this isn't good because they're probably just gonna get sus uh, suspect and spam the smoke anyways just to clear you. But if you're in a 1v1, 1v2, they're not- they're generally not gonna think to do that. Another post plant strategy that I really like to use with Omen is with the ultimate, and it's by, like, sort of faking plants. So, what I'll do is if I know that there is an anchor, and I know that, like, C is free, what I'll do is I'll ult over to A where the anchor is and then I'll just like wait for them to leave and then I'll plant. This is very, very risky and you have to time this 
extremely well because what's going to happen is the A anchor is going to think that you went C. When in actuality, you were C and you were just going to, you know, plant on A. And then you're, you know, uh, planting on A. Uh, and you're going to think. So, in sort of like the defender's mind, he's going to think, oh, he was A and he ulted over to C. And now I'm about to get finessed. And, well, I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to rotate early. But then what you can do is you can trick their A anchor into rotating early by, you know, actually being on C and then ulting over to A. Or you don't even have to start on C. You could literally just be outside of A and then, like, ult in a weird spot on A where, like, no one can see you or hear you. And then, like, you know, you just sit here for a bit, you hold, you wait, and then after that you can, uh... A plant the bomb pretty much for free um now in post plants you need to make sure that you're planting open and planting for everything or planting in a spot where like you know there's cheese because like oftentimes i'll see people in post plants they'll just plant default and think that's good which uh, i mean the default plant is fine it's default for a reason but if you have free site plant open like plant for everything because if you're planting like right here right uh, like, you can play this bomb from pretty much anywhere. You can sit heaven, swing it like this. You could be, you know, CT, playing for this wall bang, right? Okay. I swear you used to be able to wall bang. Oh, you can still wall bang that. I'm a genius. Uh, yeah, if the bomb's planted right here, you can play main. You can play short, like this. It was peak. You can even, like, you know, wall bang short, like this. Like, it's just generally a really, really good strategy to, you know, um plant open whenever you can not even just with omen with any with any character so yeah generally with omen you're gonna be you know abusing that one-way strategy uh abusing your teleports to reposition you can use your teleports to jump peek the bomb like this and sort of get an idea of where they're playing and also have the outplay of oh is he teleporting behind me uh you can do this like you can do the doctor freeze tech where you like fake tp out of your smoke like this which makes it look like you're just teleporting behind them like this which can trick them into turning around, but in actuality, you're just right here, and then you're just getting ready to blast them like that. A lot of outplays you can do with Omen. And then, of course, the blind, pretty straightforward. Blind the bomb when they tap it, whoop de doo Now, the thing with the Omen blind is you want to peek immediately after the Omen blind connects. Unlike the KO flash and the Breach flash, the Omen blind has the added benefit of not being able to be dodged, so you can really easily work off of that if you peek immediately. But anyways, yeah, that's about it for Omen. Let's go to the next guy. Phoenix! Um, the ultimate's pretty straightforward with Phoenix. Uh, if they tap the bomb, you pop your ult, you swing them, and then you get ready to fight. That's about as straightforward as it gets with- That's about as straightforward as it gets with the Phoenix ult. Uh, use that for, you know, information. But honestly, every single part of Phoenix's kit complements post plants really well. So if I go, you know, back over to A here, say the- say I go here, I plant the bomb for short, right? Uh, if they tap, I flash. Boom. If they tap, I can... Well, I can blind myself. If they flash, you know, I can double flash like this, right? And, and guarantee they get blind. If they tap, I can just huck my molly at it. If they tap, I can, you know, firewall to isolate my angles, flash through this, flash through this, and then, you know, take my free kills and take my free round. Like, there's no really wrong answer with Phoenix utility and post plants. Because every single part of his kit really, really benefits post plants, just like the way it's designed. So, generally, uh, don't fall. Again, you have to remember that pitfall with Breach. We're swinging right after you flash. With the Phoenix flash, you swing, you wait a second. Sorry, sorry. But you flash, you wait a second. And then, if they don't tap again, then you flash and you go again. Or you swing, or, or you flash. If they do tap, then you swing again, and then try and take the fight. You can flash, wait for them to tap, flash again, and then swing. You can flash, wait for them to tap, and then molly. You can flash, again, you can, you can wait for them to tap, wall, and then flash. You have options with Phoenix. Like, that's really all I have to say. You have options with Phoenix, and you can definitely mix them up quite a bit by just using your utility to your advantage. And if you have your ultimate, just consider it a free win as is because you can peek off your flashes. You don't even have to use your wall. You can just kerplooey them like this. If there's, 
there's no going wrong. There's no going wrong uh, with Phoenix and Post Plants. Phoenix is probably one of the best Post Plant agents in the game because his molly does so much damage and the molly can heal you as well if you do take a lot of damage from spam. Just, uh, there's no going wrong with Phoenix and Post Plants. Generally, you're going to be having a pretty good time with Phoenix. Anyways, yeah, let's uh, on to the next guy. Um, Some very underutilized tech with Raze is using your satchels to like uh, knock people off the bomb. Because what you can do is if they're sticking the bomb and you can get a satchel on the bomb, you can actually knock them off. Now, like how useful this is, is not really. This is not really super useful. But uh, yeah, this like, it's not really super useful to just like use your satchels to like thwack them off the bomb. But if you're in a situation where you can do it, so say you're like right here and you want to just, you know, jiggle out throw a satchel and like whack them off like that you can now the timing is a little bit tight with it because like the satchels like to get stuck to walls a lot but if you can get the timing down of it on uh if it yeah but if you can get the timing of it like on like your jiggle and just like you know get a satchel on the bomb and like knock them off that way that's a really good way to be annoying because if right because if you're doing your jiggle correctly they're really not going to be able to hit you and it's going to be like really easy to like whack them off the bomb um on top of that uh you can use your boom bot for information now i don't like to use my boom bot for kills i like to use my boom bot for information so generally i won't actually throw i won't actually throw my roomba when i hear them tap i'll throw my roomba when i hear footsteps and then i'll wait because oftentimes if they know where you are they're just gonna smoke you off or smoke off the bomb what you can do is you can see once the roomba spots someone you can see who the roomba is screaming and running towards and spam where the boomba like is so you can then you know like spam off that and then you can sort of get wall hacks through smokes if they smoke you off but if not generally just having information and post plants is good especially if it's a 1v1 because as the boomba is going and they're shooting it you can very easily run around reposition somewhere else and you know pop them from a different angle raises a grenade straightforward throw it on the bomb when they hear them tap very very straightforward or if you know that you know they tap the bomb and then they hide in corners you just throw the bomb in said corner. So say, you know, the bomb is planted like right here, right? So say the bomb is planted right here and they tap the bomb. And then after they tap the bomb, they bunny hop back platform. Uh, you can just nade back platform. And again, this situation doesn't arise too often in games, but in higher elos, oftentimes what'll happen is they'll stick the bomb and then they'll just uh, uh, bunny hop away. Especially if they know that you're far away enough or they won't hear your footsteps. You can sort of just read that and then nade back there and get a free kill. And then with Raze's ultimate, just, you know, you can use the animation cancel with the satchel. If you ult and then satchel right away, it does cancel the animation of the ult. But generally what I like to do is I will just, when, when I hear them tap, I'll ult and then I'll just not swing. I'll ult and then I won't swing. Like sometimes I'll even just like put away my ult and then use my rifle, right? Because Raze's ult lasts for a very long time. And you can get a lot of like very good stall off of the ult. And since Reza's ult is just so scary, like as a concept, because of like the insta kill that it can grant you, um, you can really get a lot of stupid like playing for time plays with ultimate. If you just like ult and then just like you know jiggle something or like whip out your you know like weapon, whip out your nade, or do anything except for shooting off the rocket until the last second. You can play for a lot of time. Now, this is meant to be more as a time play. And, you know, I'll give you a little defending tip for free. Uh, you can use the sound of Raze's ultimate to mask the sound of a defuse. So, you whip out fire in the hole and then after they defuse. Because notice how you can whip it out and then immediately defuse. So, if I plant the bomb here, I'll show you. I'll plant the bomb and I'll swap team so I can defuse. What you can do is you can do fire in the hole and then immediately go for defuse. Hello, team, I am, hello, game, I am defending, let me defuse. Well, the game ain't let me defuse the bomb, that is incredibly unfortunate, but... Yeah, you get the basic idea. Uh, you can ult and then immediately go for a defuse. You can ult and then, like, immediately go for a defuse afterwards. So, uh, and the sound of the fire in the hole will oftentimes scare people enough, so they won't actually hear you tap the bomb. Uh, yeah, that's just like uh, some tech with Ray's. Abuse it if you can. Definitely use his Ray definitely use Ray's ult for time plays as much as you can. But anyways, yeah. Uh, on to the next person. Uh, I got nothing to say with Reyna. 
uh, with Reyna, you just play the game like you normally would. Go for early picks, pop your ultimate whenever you can. A blind off the bomb tap. Do that. Really not much to say. Next character. Alrighty. Uh, Sage. Sage is stupid in post plants. I, I hate playing against Sage in post plants. Because oftentimes what they're going to do is they're just going to like throw their stupid wall right on the bomb so that you can't defuse it. It's so dumb. So dumb to deal with. Especially if you get your Sage, you know, like turtled up in with the bomb. Now, obviously I made this wall a little bit too tight and Sage is way too a dummy thick to fit in. But if you like, you know get yourself in a corner say the bomb's planted right here and you just like wall yourself out obviously i am again too dummy thick but you just wall yourself in and then you have like a shorty or like a hecking judge or something you're just sitting here ready to blast people <laughs> it's stupid stupid the amount of free rounds you can get by just using this strategy alone on top of that you have slows to fend off retakes you have your heal to hear yourself but mainly the uh the thing that I'll see a lot with Sages is they'll have the outplay and the mix-up of walling off the bomb like this, and then they'll have the mix-up of either you can play inside of your wall with a shotgun so that anyone who breaks it gets blasted, or alternatively you could be playing it in a completely different spot, probably be an off angle, hoping that when the defenders are coming out, they'll be looking at the wall ready to break it, and you're just going to be right there ready to blast them. Uh, yeah, uh, honestly, Sage is pretty straightforward with the wall next character stop using your stupid dog and post plant you see see i want to jump scare the people who like you know use the timestamps to skip through the videos so like uh you know like to all the sky players who just like uh, clicked on the video and skipped to the sky section stop using your stupid dog when they stick the bomb like i i have lost count of the amount of times that i am a defender needing to defuse the bomb in a 1v1 against a sky I hear them dog and I'm knife out bunny hopping ready to take my free kill because not only do I know exactly where they are, but they won't be able to pull out their gun in time. So, like their dumb dog is going to be like rounding the corner like this. Then you'll be like, oh, oh no. And then, and then, you know, I'm going to be like hot on their tail ready to blast them with my Araxis Vandal. Like, like it's not good. Stop using your stupid dog and post plants. Instead, use your flashes. Uh, Sky's flashes are very, very good. Now... You can use your dog as a last resort, but Sky's pop flashes and post plants are extremely powerful, especially if you, like, know how to, like, really, really, like, pop your flashes, or you know how to do, like, like, a ground flash like this, where you just, like, sort of just, like, whip out one of these, or you just, like, you know, whip out one of these, right, and you swing with it. Now, obviously, I'm not the best Sky player, because I keep blinding myself, but you get the idea. Use your flashes, not your dog and post plants, unless it's a last resort. Now, you can use your dog. If you don't know where they are, if they haven't tapped the bomb yet, and you want some information on what the retake is looking like, you could very easily use the dog. You can use the dog, that's fine. <gasps> but don't use the dog when they tap the bomb. Because you're giving away your position and you're opening yourself up to the enemy just be hopping past you and just like uh, blasting you like that. But yeah, use the flashes and something I don't see a lot of skies use is their ultimate don't be afraid to use your ultimate when you're in a post plant situation it's extremely powerful because not only does it give you information but it gives you hard cc when once the cabbages actually bite them it make it slows them and it blinds them so it makes them really 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 easy to kill anyways yeah sky ult and sky flash are generally good for post plants don't use the dog it's just generally not a good idea at least in my opinion all right next character sova is sort of in the same vein as sky when it comes to common mistakes because i will see a lot of sova players just drone off of tap which isn't really good now what you can do with sova which is very powerful is use your ultimate off the bomb tap which is generally a good idea so what you can do is you have your teammates or you ping the bomb and then you spam the bomb with your ultimate like such. Now there's a very common pitfall with the Sova ultimate that not a lot of people talk about. Is the Sova's being addicted to using their full burst. Unless you're playing for time. And you like want to stall. Then you can stall and use your full ultimate like this. But if you know that your ultimate isn't going to stall for enough time. Uh, what you can do is you can shoot your first two blasts 
And if neither of your two blasts hit, it's not worth shooting the third one because the third one, they're just gonna tank and defuse regardless. So normally, if I know that I don't have time, I will just blast my Sova ultimate twice, like this. And if I don't get a tag on either of them, then I'll cancel it and just play the post plant normally. But if I do get a tag on one of them, if I do get a tag on one of them, then I'll just commit to the second one because then I know one of them is tagged. That's just like the way to use the ultimate. Or if you have the option to with your ultimate, use it in tandem with your dart. So if you have like, you know, a dart lineup like this, right, where you can like cover the bomb with your dart. Now, obviously that's not a lineup. I'm not, I am not a uh, average Jonas, but uh, you get the idea. You can uh, dart like this and then get the bomb and then off of the reveal, you can ult off of the reveal, you get the idea. Whoa, my power just flickered. That's weird. Anyways, um, anyways, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can do that. Um, but another trick that I see with Sova a lot is they'll use this dart trick, which is they'll stand right on top of the bomb. They'll do a two charge bounce straight up in the air. They'll wait a couple seconds and then they'll two charge bounce off the ground like this. Now what this will do is this will sort of time it so that the two arrows will like meet each other and they'll explode at the same time on the ground. Like that. Um, again, you shoot one, full charge, two bounces in the air, like this, just straight up. That was a uh, recon dart. Straight up in the air. Then you wait a couple seconds, you look down, blast it again. And that should be the rough timing. That is the... Uh, Recon dart. Yeah. This one should come down. And this one should also come down. But I mistimed it a little bit. I shot the second one a little bit too fast. But you get the idea. It works. Um. Anyways, yeah. So that's like like all my Sova tips for post plant. Don't use your drone off tap. Instead, use your drone um, before the retake starts. And during the retake itself. So you can get info on like, you know, what they're using, who they got, etc. Um, and like where they are so that you can get an idea of what you're dealing with when you actually do retake But don't use your drone off of tap unless you know for a fact that you can't get pushed All right viper So there's two main tips that I'll give with viper one has to do with like the molly and like the smoke combo And the other one has to do with the ultimate So uh, anyways, um first off uh, Generally what you'll see viper players do is they will put their smoke down like this on top of the bomb and then whenever they tap, they'll pop their smoke and they'll throw their molly. This is good. I have I have no I have no problems with this. This is good. However, there is an alternative thing you can do. You can also throw your wall across the bomb like this. Now, obviously, like what like you should be using your wall for the sight hit. But if you do for some reason have your wall left over, you can use it across the bomb like this, and that also gives you those stacks of decay as well. So you know. That can be beneficial for you. Now, as far as the ultimate goes, um, uh, shotguns and ultimate is very good. Now, obviously, you could just use your Vandal in your ultimate, and that's fine. But sh using shotguns and Viper ult is, is really, really good for post plants. Um, and in post plants, you never want to give away your positions like very quickly. So what you should be what you should be doing is you should be staying out of range of the spike. And if they tap the bomb, what you do is you molly it and then you immediately reposition, preferably outside of your ultimate. Because after the enemy team sees you molly the bomb from inside your ultimate, like this, so say they see you molly over here, they're immediately going to be checking over this area. So if you come out of your ultimate like this, and like say do this, and then drop your entire ultimate on them, you're on an off angle and you pretty much win right then and there. But that's just with the ultimate. But as far as you know, the smoke goes with the molly. Just pop the smoke, throw the molly on top of the bomb with the smoke. The smoke will add, you know, uh, stacks of decay on them. And then the molly will, of course, be doing the uh, the bulk of the damage. So, and you can really buy quite a bit of time because no one is no one is really going to want to be sticking through a... No one is really going to want to be sticking through a viper molly and viper smokes. So you can definitely stall quite a bit of time with that. And the rest of it is just, you know general post plant etiquette make sure that 
you're not swinging off the first tap, make sure you don't give away your position too soon, and make sure that at the end of the day, you are playing time, not going for the kills. You are trying to play for time. So the more you can stall, the better. Anyways, uh, on to the final agent. Yoru, Yoru, Yoru. <laughs> oh, where do I even start? If you are losing a post plant with Yoru, you're, you are, you should just quit the game. Yoru is the freest post plants probably out of the entire game just because the amount of outplays you can do. So imagine this scenario. You plant the bomb and you have your footsteps set up for right here. You have a teleport going back to site. A mat look at the layers of deception you can do with even this. First off, you're gonna do a, you're gonna do a fake flash for A main to make them think that you're playing A main. They're gonna be looking A main, and then you're what you're gonna do is you're gonna fake your TP over here and immediately whip out your footsteps and throw another TP. So they're gonna think, oh, you faked your TP and there's the footsteps. But then in actuality, you're actually gonna take the TP and kill them from the second TP that you throw. Look at the layers of deception of even that. That's like a 20% chance that the enemy is actually going to figure out where you actually are just based off of that alone but if you mix in all the other types of deceptions you can do in the different combinations even with the ultimate like you're just not going to be losing a single post plant ever again <gasps> especially because with the ultimate if you hear them tap the bomb you can ult and you can just sit there and watch them you ult and you sit there and watch them if they're sticking you get out and you blast them with your shorty if, you know, you're sitting there watching them and they're like, you know, roaming around, you get free information on where they are. And then you get to, you know, set up like, you know, like a clone with like a shorty ult like this. Um, or And at the entire time, you're going to have a teleport to get out either way. So you're just going to sit here. You're going to like, you know, just watch them either stick the bomb or not stick the bomb. You have a teleport to get out. You still have two flashes. If you have your ultimate, definitely opt to save it for post plants like this. But even without your ultimate, you have many layers of deception. Uh, there's this one trick that I used in an actual game. I wish I had the clip, um, but I did a cleaning of my PC storage recently, and I'm pretty sure that clip went down with it. RIP clip. But here's what I, but here's what I ended up doing. It was on ascent, right? It was on ascent. Now imagine this is like ascent, but I can sort of recreate this on Haven. So on ascent, um, a site, right? On ascent, a site there's the tree door right here right and what i did was the bomb was planted generator so the bomb was planted about right here what i did was i had my teleport set to be like right here like near the tree door and i was playing in main what i did was i fake flashed over here and then i immediately swung and since this was relatively high elo people in this elo know about the yoru fake flash yoru fake flash being you flash somewhere acting like you're flashing for yourself over here so say if you were right here and you want to flash you would flash over here or if you wanted to flash like this you would flash over here for yourself right here what you can do is you can fake that by being like over here or whatever and then fake flashing for yourself like this so i was sitting main and what i did was i fake flashed over like this to make them think i was tree but then i immediately peeked a main and started jiggling now at this point in the enemy team's head they have ruled out this is a possibility because they saw me quote unquote mess up because if you want to do your fake flash effectively you don't peek right away you wait for them to turn and then you peek but but by peeking right away i've quote unquote given away my position so when they get back on the bomb i actually take my tp and then i nail them like that but like it wasn't this close to the bomb it was far enough away to where they would still hear the tp but like they wouldn't exactly know where it was coming from um and this like won me that round because i fake flashed i jiggled give it gave away my position waited for them to get on the bomb again flash and actually tp'd on them like this and that's just like more layers of deception you can do any combination of Yoru's utility and post plants, especially if you have full util, is going to be very good. And if you have your ultimate, you just don't lose post plants. You just sit here, you wait for them to, you know, do whatever. Drop them guns, do whatever you want to do. You can have a lot of fun with it. But anyways, yeah, that is going to do it for my post plant guide. Um, I If you have any suggestions of, you know, stuff that's agent specific that I missed, please let me know in the comments below. I'm always down to learn new stuff about this game. Um, if there's anything I said that, you know, is wrong and you want to correct me on it, feel free to do that in the one in the comments below. 
Uh, if you want to suggest new videos, like a, you know, brimstone molly guide or whatever, um, for all, for, like, maps that I do like this, these long-form videos, please suggest them down in the comments below. But anyways, yeah, uh, that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, subscribe, I'm trying to get to, uh, 10k by the end of the year. I know I can do it. Uh, with your guys' help, it, drop that sub below if this video helped you at all. Anyways, yeah, enough, uh, being a sellout. Uh, good luck on the grind, gamers. See ya! Hey you, if you made it to the end of the video, make sure to subscribe to berate, or I will take your valorant elo.